we are always asking that question, what, what causes crime? It depends who you ask. Suppose if you ask the minister or a clergy person, they'll say it's, you know, lack of good moral upbringing. If you were to ask a sociologist, they might point to the conditions in a community or a person's life opportunities and poverty. If you were to ask a criminologist, they would say, well, what causes crime are people breaking laws. <laughs> In my experience, our crime tends to look very much like folks who don't have a lot of opportunities, a lot of chances, a lot of support. We are young leaders against crime and have decided to go to New York because we had heard of some positive solutions that could direct youths and organizations to ways in which young people can help themselves and people working with young people can help support this process. Yo, that's right. In general, I do think that young people, there is a stigma against them. Certain times you'll see elderly people um, looking at young people in a way that might be as if they, they feel that they're up to no good. Young people love to get into love to get into mischief, do bad things sometimes. But with the availability of guns, knives, uh, you know, the, the conditions that, we, that we're put into, our perceptions of how we're supposed to be, it uh, makes it really dangerous for a young person. They can fall into a lot of traps. We have major robberies, um, assaults, all occurring from uh, youth. Our trip began with a short stay with two police officers from the 81st Precinct and some of the youths involved with their local programs. While with them, they explained what went on and how it contributed to the wider community. At the 81st Precinct in bedford Stuyvesant, where I work, there are lots of youth programs throughout the neighborhood. Well, we have a uh, youth council program. We meet once a week. We talk about anything and everything, pretty much a big yap session. You know, let them see how what they can do can affect other people within the community and become a positive influence on the kids now, you know, instead of um, all the negative things that you're hearing about them. This is our youth council, junior youth council, and we have guests today from London, England. I've been a police officer in the 81st Precinct for 15 years. I've been working with the youth for the last five years. I mean, we just do so much. We do cops and kids basketball. We deliver uh, meals to homeless people. We deliver meals to uh, shut-ins on Thanksgiving. We do talent shows. We run pretty much so many programs that we try to get these kids, you know, uh, pretty much another way out. <laughs> well, what kind of crimes do we see out here in Bethesda? What kind of crimes? We Youth see? crimes. Youth crimes we see. Yeah. When they jump somebody, jumping means like a, like a group of, say, five youths jump on one youth and beat the, beat the mess out of them until they bloody and stuff. Um, I see robbery. Um, just plain nonsense. It'd be like younger and younger children bringing weapons to school, knives, even like screwdrivers, stuff like that. Anything that be that can be considered as a weapon, they bring to school. The youth council is like another place where everybody just come and we sit down, we interact with each other, and we like try to keep people off the streets and give them a different way to learn. The youth council is just a safe place to go where you don't want to hang around the hood. It's different people in. You can have you have a lot of friends in here. You go on trips and everything, you know, just having fun with each other in a safe environment. When I joined the Youth Council, I was like heading down the wrong road, but it helped a lot. Because yeah. if I wouldn't have joined the Youth Council, I probably would not be standing here right now. We try to let them see that there's something else out there. There are people who care if we're police officers or if we're in our regular homes and our regular, you know, uh, settings that there are people who care and hopefully that can help lead them out to the path that some of them are actually going. If you know what's best for you, you would join the youth council and do a lot of things and you can learn a lot from being in the youth council. And, um, you'd just be a better person, make you a better person and do good things in your life. One of the other youth initiatives we encountered was a youth court led by young people who decided to go and take a look. The youth court is a program where a group of young people 
hear cases about where other young people have gotten into trouble with the police. What we've done is set up two youth courts, one in Red Hook, Brooklyn, and one in East Harlem in Manhattan, where instead of getting a YD card and nothing happening, the youth instead gets referred gets referred to a youth court. We work really closely with the police, but we're not a legal court, we're a community program. So what you'll see today are kids who have committed some sort of low-level offense. They're not necessarily admitting legal guilt. The, they're coming through, they're saying, yes, I was involved in putting this rock through the store window. Yes, I stole that person's wallet. Yes, I got in a fist fight in the school cafeteria. Whatever it is, they have this charge. They're coming in saying I was involved. The participants of the youth court who act as judge, jury, and attorneys go through a training program. They learn how the system works. They learn how to operate as a team. Then they'll hear a case. And after hearing the case, they hear the youth's uh, side of what happened. They might hear from a victim, someone who was harmed by the incident. And then they'll give out a sentence, which usually involves something like a letter of apology, an essay, or a community service. And actually, once the youth who committed the offense goes through the process, they have the option of being trained to be a member of the youth court. So I ask that you not judge her, but help her by giving her a fair beneficial sanction. I feel that Youth Court is very successful. It inspires respondents that come here to join Youth Court and they leave with a learning experience. Personally, I gain speaking skills as well as writing skills because we have to communicate with the respondents, guests, and our peers that work with us. The idea is that youth as peers can, should have some say over their over other youth as to what happens and to make the system a little more fair for the youth but also for young people to see that their actions have real consequences not just in their lives but to the people around them. Despite the successes of Red Hook Youth Court, some individuals will reoffend. Unfortunately, the likelihood is that they will end up in a detention center just like the one we visited called Crossroads. Crossroads is one of the facilities run by the Department of uh, Juvenile Justice in New York City. Kids will be here maybe about 30 days, average uh, length of stay. Why they're here is an opportunity for us to uh, interact with the children and make a positive impact so that the kids, uh, whatever it is that they're here for or accused of being here, that, uh, that you know, they, they have a, another recourse to take when they get out. We make the most of uh, the time that we do have with them to effect uh, a positive intervention, put them on a more positive path, and uh, help them develop the skills and decision-making ability that uh, enables them to empower themselves and change their lives for the better. A lot of uh, the youngsters, this is their first opportunity of having guidance. This is the opportunity of having mentorship. Uh, some never had rooms by themselves. This is a detention facility and while we do good work, we would prefer not to see these children and it's not ultimately the healthiest environment for which a child should be in. While they're here, we, we make the most and we give them uh, all the services they need and we try to provide them with skills to deal with some of their issues but the bottom line is they're only here until their cases are heard in the court system and then they move on and hopefully they move on to better things. We found a great program in which young people are informed about crime and methods of prevention. Young people are positively involved in all levels of delivery and we saw how young people can really make a difference in their communities. Well, my name is Mike Rivera. I'm from, I uh, work for New Yorkers Against Gun Violence as a program associate currently. This program has gone for about, I'd say, a good seven years, but for the last two years, we've actually had class time in the school. We have almost always have been in the school, teaching students how to be uh, effective youth lobbyists. What we've done is kind of make it part of the mediation class. This is uh, actually part of their uh, curriculum, so we're a little more involved in the, in the kind of things they're being taught. It's an alternative class. Well, mediation is a program where a group of kids are interested in helping others that fight or have conflicts with verbal uh, situations. We volunteer to help them because we don't want that much violence in our school. We're teenagers. We're in the same group. We're peers. 
So we understand what they're going through. We are gonna understand what they're saying, and we're gonna we're gonna comprehend it and translate it to the adults. It helps get guns off the streets, first of all, and it reduces gun violence. Which, for me, I've been through a lot of situations with guns and all that. I've seen guns, touched one, a gun has been pointed to me. And to tell you the truth, I really don't want a lot of people to go through that situation. I mean, I'm on that program because I've been, I've been, you know. I've been in problem with the police, you know. I, I have been in jail before. My point is is to help out in any way I can, you know. It's, if they want to ask me any question, I can help them out answering questions that they might not, you know, they might not know how to answer those questions. People wake up. Students do wake up. They come to me later on, especially after speaking with the elected officials, something that these students will never get a chance to do in their life most of the time. Uh, they actually open their eyes and say, wow, I didn't even know gun violence was an issue. To us, uh, especially here in New York, we're conditioned to it. We go to sleep with gunshots at night. It's, it's real common. But uh, if, if schools had more of these programs, most definitely, it would definitely make a better tomorrow. Getting young people involved, a, a good uh, education, keeping them in school, uh, keeping them involved in positive activities, I feel would do a great job in reducing the youth crime throughout uh, the city. Just think about your family, man. You know, just think about your family and, and just walk out of it, man. You know, it's, it's, it's not worth it. If we are serious about combating crime, we need to address some of the ways in which the programs we visited can be established and adapted here in the UK.